Chen Jiu, He Wanbao, and Su Shenchen left the inn to begin their journey to Yueshan. Su Shenchen mentioned that she had some urgent matters to attend to and needed to leave them for a while. He Wanbao immediately inquired about the nature of the urgency that required her to leave alone. Su Shenchen hesitated, as if there was something she couldn't easily disclose. Ki Wanbao asked if she wanted go to the restroom. She replied affirmatively. Ki Wanbao then remarked that there was nothing secretive about going to the restroom, and she could accompany her. Su Shenchen quickly declined, stating that she could go alone. Ki Wanbao insisted on accompanying her, leading Su Shenchen to realize that Ki Wanbao had started to suspect something. Huo's HUYA strolled through a marketplace, and he picked out a kaleidoscope with the intention of giving it to Ki Wanbao as a gift. Suhanyu, carrying Sukyankin on his back, arrived at a small guest room, finally finding a place to rest. He gently set Sukyankin down and helped her sit. However, she expressed displeasure, stating that the place was too shabby to stay in. Suhanya scolded her, emphasizing that in such a remote and desolate location, this was already quite good, and she shouldn't be overly delicate. Then, he examined her wounds. As he applied medicine, she cried out in pain, asking him to be gentler. Suhanya retorted, questioning why he should be gentle with her as she wasn't his cousin. She replied that his mind was filled with thoughts of his cousin, emphasizing their close bond growing up together. Suhanyu explained that their relationship was like siblings who had grown up together, a connection she couldn't possibly understand. Ki Wanbao and Su Shenchen entered a room at an inn. Ki Wanbao was delighted, admiring everything in the room. However, Su Shenchen seemed preoccupied with her thoughts. When a waiter passed by, she called him over, handing him a sachet and some silver coins, asking him to help purchase some wine. When the waiter walked out of the room into the hallway, he noticed there was a note inside the items Su Shenchen had given him. Following the instructions on the note, he placed the sachet in the room where Chen Jiao was staying. That night, the sachet exuded an aphrodisiac fragrance beside the sleeping Chen Jiu, arousing intense desires in his dreams. He dreamed of transforming into a little fox, sharing a bath with Ki Wanbao, and even a scene where Ki Wanbao had touched him, kissed him. Ki Wanbao fell asleep, but Su Shenchen couldn't find rest. Realizing that two hours had passed, she was certain the aphrodisiac in the sachet must have taken effect, and it was time for her to go to Chen Jiu's room. She gently moved away from Ki Wanbao, slid out of bed quietly, and then tiptoed to Chen Jiu's room. She knocked softly on the door. When she opened it, Chen Jiu stumbled out, leaning against the door, and asked if she needed anything. She replied that there was nothing in particular, just that she wanted to come and see him. At this moment, Chen Jiu found it extremely difficult to speak, almost unable to form coherent words. Su Shenchen suggested going inside to pour a glass of water for him. Chen Jiu struggled to say he didn't need it and grabbed her, preventing her from entering the room. Ki Wanbao came out just in time to see them in a tug of war and assumed Su Shenchen was sleepwalking, deciding to go back to her room. Chen Jiu immediately used his spiritual power to pull Ki Wanbao back, then embraced her and entered the room, closing the door. Outside, Su Shenchen continued to knock and call for Chen Jiu. In response, he used his spiritual power to keep her fixed outside the door. Ki Wanbao stared at Chen Jiu in shock and asked if he was sick. He replied that he was sick, 
and his mind was filled with thoughts of her. Ki Wan Bao, puzzled, asked what kind of illness it was. He explained that the scene of them bathing together had made him sick. She told him they had never bathed together and asked him to let go of her. Chen Jiu tightened his grip, wanting to kiss her. She accused him of acting indecently. Chen Jiu struggled to restrain himself, pushed Ki Wan Bao out of the room, and told her to leave. Ki Wan Bao returned to her room, feeling that her master must have been affected by an evil force. Consequently, she brewed a tea to counteract the effects of the malevolent influence. Ki Wan Bao, carrying the tea, returned to Chen Jiu's room. He asked why she was back, and she replied that she had come to bring him the tea, assuring him that it would make him feel better if he drank it. He told her to leave again. As she placed the tea on the table and turned to leave, Chen Jiu immediately grabbed her pulling her into his arms and expressing deep affection. Then, kissed her. Ki Wan Bao came out from Chen Jiu's room, seeing Su Shenchen still stood there, she took her back to their own room. Chen Jiu drank the tea prepared by Ki Wan Bao and felt much better. He then video called Hubili, asking him what it meant if he wanted to get close to Ki Wan Bao. Hubili replied that it meant he had developed feelings for her, and that could lead to trouble in the future. Suhanyu and Sakyankin arrived at the marketplace. He requested that Sakyankin stop following him, expressing his desire to find his cousin without being burdened by her constant presence. However, she insisted on accompanying him. Their disagreement escalated and as Suhanyu attempted to leave, Sakyankin pursued him. Suddenly, a group of masked strangers appeared and kidnapped them both. They were tied up and placed in a courtyard, and one of the masked strangers demanded that they reveal Ki Wan Bao's whereabouts. Suhanyu claimed he didn't know, but the stranger threatened their lives, insisting they disclose Ki Wan Bao's location. Sakyankin hastily confessed that they truly didn't know, but Suhanyu had a flute that could contact Ki Wan Bao. Suhanyu angrily accused her of being a traitor. The next morning, Chen Jiu woke up and discovered the sachet beneath his pillow. Realizing why he had fallen ill the previous night, he inquired with the inn's waiter and learned that Su Shenchen was behind the scheme. The three of them sat awkwardly at a dining table, but when the food arrived, Chen Jiu, as usual, took care of Ki Wan Bao, breaking the awkward atmosphere. Ki Wan Bao graciously accepted, and only Su Shenchen looked at them with confusion. Chen Jiu then told Su Shenchen that he wanted to have a private conversation with her, leaving her surprised. Chen Jiu took Su Shenchen outside and pulled out the small sachet, asking her where it came from. She replied that a masked woman in the woods had given it to her that day. Ki Wan Bao returned to her room alone and heard the sound of a flute, knowing that her cousin was looking for her. Following the melody, she found where Su Hanyu and Sakyankin were being held captive. However, she sensed that something was amiss and approached cautiously. She overheard the masked person saying that they would see if Ki Wan Bao would come to rescue them. Su Hanya responded, expressing confidence that his cousin wouldn't fall into a trap willingly. Ki Wan Bao pushed the door open, standing confidently at the entrance. Su Hanya anxiously questioned why she came when she knew it was a trap. She replied that someone had kidnapped her dearest people, and no matter the danger, she had to come. She demanded the masked person release her cousin and his companion. The masked person refused, claiming she had no authority to make such demands. In response, Ki Wan Bao held a knife to her own throat, 
threatening to take her own life if they weren't released. Faced with this, the masked person agreed to let Suhanyu and Sakyankin go. Suhanyu hesitated to leave, but Kiwan Bao insisted that Sakyankin take him away. The masked person demanded that Kiwan Bao obediently follow and not resist. Naturally, Kiwan Bao refused to comply and engaged in a struggle with the masked person. Suhanyu and Sakyankin arrived outside and he insisted on going back to rescue Kiwan Bao. Sakinkin urged him not to sacrifice himself, but Suhanyu remained determined to go back. Just as Kiwan Bao was about to be struck by a sword, a long whip flew in and deflected the attack. It turned out to be Sakinkin's whip, and she and Suhanyu had returned. The three of them joined forces to battle the masked person. Chen Jiu and Su Shenchen arrived outside Kiwan Bao's room. He knocked on the door, but there was no response from inside. The innkeeper informed him that Kiwan Bao had left in a hurry. Worried, Chen Jiu also hastily left the inn. Sakinkin and Suhanyu were both knocked down on the ground. Enraged, Kiwan Bao fueled by the spiritual power within her containing Chen Jiu's immortal fruit, screamed explosively as she charged at the masked person. Chen Jiu, who was nearby searching for her, heard her cries and rushed over. Just as Kiwan Bao was about to collapse, Chen Jiu arrived, catching her in his arms. She fainted in his embrace. Chen Jiu anxiously checked her wrist for a pulse and discovered that her meridians were severed.